All right. I mean, this is a pretty good crowd, especially after lunch, right? You guys might be ready to sleep the nap, so I try to stay awake for the presentation. I'm joking. So my name is Alberto Vieira. I do developer relations at Moonbeam. I actually live in Barcelona, so this is a great time for me to be here because I just live like 15 minutes away, so I don't have to travel. I, there's no jet lag, at least for me. So uh, let's start with the presentation, right? So uh, Moonbeam, the Swiss Army knife of smart contract platforms. So. Um, the first question that we get asked is what is Moonbeam, right? I mean, uh, if you are familiar with Polkadot, you probably might have heard about Moonbeam before, but if not, this may be the first time that you've heard about Moonbeam. So um, as the slide suggests, Moonbeam is a smart contract platform or parachain uh, on the Polkadot ecosystem. As with any Ethereum-compatible blockchain out there, right? I mean, the ones that we know, like Avalanche, uh, you know, Near, Polygon, whatever, um, the base layer of Ethereum compatibility is EVM. It's a machine that allows us to execute smart contract transactions and calculate the new state of the network, right? So if I had one token, I send a transaction to Alice, you know, with one token, the EVM will execute it and make sure that Alice has that token now. But Moomin is a lot more than just an EVM compatible blockchain. Let me take you through, through the whys, basically. First, we are built with Substrate. Substrate, if you don't know, is the sort of like the Cosmos SDK of the Polkadot ecosystem. It's also called the Polkadot SDK. And the cool thing about Substrate is that it's a modular blockchain framework. That sounds fancy, but what that means is that you can create very modular blockchains with, with plugins that you can connect and disconnect at, at you know, protocol's will. And that gives you a lot of advantages when you're building a blockchain, right? And we're going to see some of these advantages later on in, in, in further slides. The next thing, which I actually included this recently, you know, is that we have very fast finality. Why is this important? Because Moomin is, is focused on cross-chain scenarios and interoperability. And with the L2s that are popping everywhere, they're really famous right now, finality, it's an important thing when you're doing cross-chain. You can ask the Chainlink folks with CCIP because um, L2s tell you that finality is two seconds or three seconds, but that's not real. That's soft finality. The finality that is important for cross-chain is actually hard finality or however you want to call it. And on L2s can be 12 to 20 minutes. It just depends on network conditions. Average, I think, is like 13 minutes. So that is, that is not great. Moomin provides a very, very fast finality of 12 seconds, and it's, it's, it's going to go down to six seconds with a big protocol upgrade that we have coming up hopefully in December. The next thing, and this is a crucial component of Ethereum compatibility, is Web3 RPC. This is actually the component that allows um, tools like MetaMask, like Hardhat, like EtherJS, whatever developer tool that you have used on Ethereum or Avalanche or others, you can use it on Moonbeam without any major changes. So that's why on Moonbeam, if you have a set of smart contracts that you have set up on Hardhat, you just add Moonbeam as a network, hit deploy, and it works like magic, right? It's automatic, magically will happen, and you will be able to use your tools, the things that you know and love, on Moonbeam. This also, it's important because this is what allows tools like Chainlink, for example, to work on Moonbeam, like uh, the Graph, like uh, Gnosis Multisig Wallet, and all these things, and even Etherscan. We have Etherscan called Moonscan on Moonbeam, and this Web3 RPC support is what's, what allows us to support all these tools, the, just great tools that developers know, love, and need when they're developing on uh, and smart contracts on EVM. And the last one um, is very specific to Polkadot, but basically on Moonbeam, you will use the Ethereum accounts that you're familiar, right? And that's not a thing in the Polkadot ecosystem. So, so on Moonbeam, we've modified the sort of, because we're modular, our blockchain is very modular, we can actually modify the account system so that we use Ethereum account systems. All this means is that you can, for example, take out your ledger or your Trezor, if you use hardware wallets and may basically connect them in MetaMask and use it on Moomin as your native wallet. You don't have to use Polkadot.js extension or any other substrate-based wallets, which, you know, it's, it's a major friction point for, for some people. But I did mention before that we have EVM, and we, we've expanded on top of the EVM because we are a modular framework. So what does this mean? So a user, a very happy user with a mustache, if they want to interact with Moonbeam, basically, they use what is called the Ethereum interface, or what we call the Ethereum interface, right? This is when you do it through tools like MetaMask, Remix, Hardhat, and so on. 
This is basically using the Ethereum JSON RPC underneath, and we're fully compatible with that. But this limits this user to things that are basically Ethereum-like. So if, if we only limit this, we limit it to this, they have nothing more than just another EVM. Nothing special, just 12 seconds finality, and that's it. However, when, um, when another user, when the user wants to interact with the more advanced features of Moonbeam, uh, they can use what is called the Substrate Interface. The Substrate Interface, it's, it's a bit more advanced because it allows you to have access features like staking. We don't have staking in a smart contract. We have protocol-based staking. We have protocol-based governance that it's fully on-chain, and it's not like the snapshot drama that happened with Arbitrum, where token holders decided to, you know, they selected apples, but then they did oranges, right? That doesn't happen on Moomi because all the governance actions are fully on-chain, and if the network decides that I have to transfer tokens to Bob, and the network decides, that's it. And this unlocks a lot of cool features because in Moomin, you have forkless upgrades. If the protocol decides via governance that it started on block X, we're going to use this new version of the software. It is enforced on chain, and there's no way to, 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 you don't have to call miners and tell them, hey guys, on block 1000, we're all going to switch to this version, okay? So that makes it a lot, it, it's truly decentralized and truly trustless. And XCM, which is basically the native protocol, uh, interoperability protocol of Polkadot. But I don't know if you noticed that. The guy over there, when uh, he was using the Ethereum interface, I showed MetaMask and Ledger. But when I moved to the Substrate interface, there was no MetaMask and Ledger. Why is that? Because MetaMask and Ledger and, and Ethereum wallets don't really understand the Substrate, right? They don't really understand that language. And so you might ask yourself, hey, Alberto, but as an Ethereum developer, how can I access these cool features using the Ethereum API? And what we created are a set of pre-compiled contracts that are basically serve like an interface, they're, they're like an ABI, so that you know, the user can still access these cool features through the Ethereum interface, and then the pre-compiles are like a translation between an EVM interface and then Substrate. And so the cool thing now is that, for example, if you go to the Moomim DAB, you're going to do staking, that is protocol level staking, but you're going to do it from your wallet, from your, your Ethereum-based wallet. Nothing, ch nothing changes, basically, which is, which is what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve a seamless and frictionless Ethereum environment with advanced features. So, Moomin precompiles, right? Everyone loves memes. So basically, the beauty of Moomin precompiles is that you don't need to know Rust, Substrate. You don't need to know any sort of weird language smart contracts, like, for example, in Solana, where you had to know their thing. Um, you don't have to use weird SDKs like Polkadot.js SDK. So an, as an Ethereum developer, you're going to use the tools that you know and love, you've been using for years, even Foundry, which is like the hot thing right now. You can use that as well. And you don't need to know Polkadot and Substrate-specific terminology, right? You, you just basically worry about what is the precompiled functionality, and for that, we have really good documentation set where you can basically just check the documentation or ask us in Telegram or whatever. You need to know the precompile address, basically, because every precompile is, is stored in an address, like a smart contract address. And you can check our documentation as well to check the address. And then last but not least, it, like I said before, is compatible with all the ETH tools. I'm actually lying right now, and I just actually figured that out here in the stage, because the only thing that precompiles don't work with is like things like hard hat fork, right? Or like, well, truffle, rest in peace, but truffle uh, ganache, right? Why? Because uh, Hard Hat Fork and Truffle Ganache used to work, you work with Geth clients, and Geth doesn't really know about Moomin precompiles. But you know, we do offer alternatives like a Moomin uh, Ganache node so that you can work with precompiles as well. But precompiles are an essential tool to provide better user experience. And let me tell you a couple of examples of precompiles to show you that they can provide better user experience when building smart contracts. The first precompile that I have, and I want to make sure that I'm on time, the first precompile that I have here is a batch precompile, which is basically a way for you to batch transactions, multiple transactions, and then into one single transaction that is signed by an EOA. And this is a critical point, because you can do that on Ethereum with smart contract wallets, but you cannot do that from EOA accounts, right? So if, for example, if you're playing a game, and the game has you know, a, a store, and you want to buy a helmet, a sword, and a shield, and there are different NFTs, you're going to have to sign three transactions that is really poor user experience, right? 
But with the batch pre-compiled, you can add like a shopping cart experience in which you know you just click add to shopping cart, add to shopping cart, and then these are like bundling these transactions, and then the application can just show the happy user, because they have a smiley face there over there, um, one single transaction that they will sign with their wallet, and that's going to provide them basically one be better user experience across the board. And then that transaction will be sent from the application to Moonbeam, and that overall improves basically the user experience. So over the weekend, I was in the hacker house, and I, I was able to open the link there that I put in the slides just to show you how often this pre-compile is being used on Moonbeam on a daily basis. I think in a matter of an hour, you can see at least 10 to 12 transactions, which is pretty cool. Actually, yesterday I opened one that had like 12 transactions in it. So imagine <laughs> the difference of having to sign 12 transactions from a wallet to just having to sign one, which, which just provides so much better user experience. The next one is pretty cool. It's a bit more complicated, but it's pretty cool because it's very good for gaming, right? And that's why I brought this example over here. So imagine you have, and this is actually a, a real world example that us at the DevRel team, we created this flow for them without them even knowing. So basically there was this pirate game, uh, it's called uh, Damn Pirate Society, where you have uh, pirate ships and you can send them to voyages and they loot villages and then you get loot and treasures, and then you can sell them, whatever. It's, it's pretty, pretty sort of like basic game to understand, right? Um, I used to play Pirates in Nintendo back in the day, uh, so it's, I, I do have an analogy with the game, right? So basically, uh, when you had your ship and the ship broke, right, you had to repair it, and everything was on chain. And so basically, it, this actually provided a really bad user experience because you have an in-game token called Dublons. That's a very pirate token name. It's like perfect, right? But then you had Dublons, but to repair your ship, you had to pay in Glimmer, which is the Moomium token. So imagine that in like a Web 2 game, right? I mean, a lot of people probably played World of Warcraft, whatever you know, online game you've played, and then you have the in-game token, and that is the mechanism for you to interact with the game. You don't have like a secondary token that is whatever, whatever, right? And so in here, the flow that we created is that we created a way for you to repair your ship with Dublons so the user will actually sign the message, okay, saying, I want to repair my ships, and then provide Dublons with that signature. And then the protocol or the application can, can call the call permit precompile, which allows any call on Moomin to be gasless, right? This is possible right now on Ethereum with a thing called Biconomy, but Biconomy requires you to modify your smart contracts. And that's a problem because now you're modifying your code if your code was immutable, meaning that you cannot change it, that it's an issue, right? But not only that, if, if you, let's say you change your contracts, now you're dependent on the security perspective of that modification. In this case, we did this entire flow without them even knowing because they didn't have to change a single line of code, which shows the power of the call permit precompile, all right? So basically, once again, no smart contract modifications, like developers don't have to change a single line of code, um, dApps can submit the user transactions, and there's actually another game called Glimmer Apes, where they created the whole flow. Like they, they said, like no worries, we'll just use the call permit precompile. We'll create our own, our, our own internal model to be able to sustain it, meaning that they could charge the user in doublons in this case, and then they could swap the doublons for Glimmer, and then pay the transaction fees in Glimmers. This doesn't mean that the transactions are free. They're free for the user and someone else is paying uh, the gas or they, they're subsidized maybe. And this overall, once again, uh, improved the user experience, which is one of the things that is important in Web3 that we're not addressing right now. Again, I, check, I put a link, check it out for yourself. This is a pre-compile that is being used on production on a daily basis. But I don't want to focus this only on pre-compiles and user experience. I want to also show you the bigger picture of what Moomium is working on. And we are working on, we're moving to a cross-chain future, right? Uh, I think the cool thing about this conference that Chainlink uh, presented is CCIP. Everyone knows about it now. Uh, they are live on mainnet, which is great. And so Chainlink also believes about the cross-chain future, right? It's, this is not, this is not going to be one single chain that it's going to sort of like win everything. You know, this is going to be multiple chains working together sort of to provide web, a Web3, a decentralized experience to end users. And so this is how Moomium is positioned in that future, okay? So we have, Moomium is part of the Polkadot ecosystem that is shown to the right of the slide, but Moomium is also connected through, you know, all the major uh, GMP protocols, not CCIP right now, we hope in the future, to 
all the major blockchain ecosystems, right? And so Moomium is really well positioned because you, know, you can access Polkadot services. So Polkadot can provide L2s that are not L2s, so app-specific chains that are L1s, really, so they have 12-second or 6-second finality um, for services. But you know, Moomium can also serve as a hub for interoperability, which is also great. Derek, the founder of Moonbeam this morning, talked about different scenarios, right? For example, um, there's a scenario in which uh, everyone has heard of Osmosis. It's a DEX on Cosmos, on the Cosmos uh, hub. And basically, Osmosis is a DEX. They wanted DOT liquidity, right? DOT from the Polkadot blockchain on Cosmos, right? And so like, there was a team that developed a path to do that in which you send DOT from Polkadot to Moonbeam, and then using a GMP, you move it to the Cosmos hub, and then through IBC, you move it to Osmosis. And everything is done in one single click. That is a cross-chain experience that we need to present to users, hiding all the complexity about everything that is going underneath. It's, it's crazy when you think about it. But nowadays, everyone takes up the phone and log into whatever app, and you're not thinking about what's happening, right? We actually think that internet is like a, a human right now. Like We don't think about, oh, no, I'm not connected. You, you already take out your phone and you start using internet. So the future is going to be cross-chain, and we're going to start doing these sort of like crossing integrations or interactions without even knowing that that's going to happen, OK? Another really cool example that I want to I wanna mention is basically Prime Protocol. So they're actually a cross-chain borrowing and lending. What this means is that you can put your collateral in Avalanche. That sends a cross-chain message to Moonbeam, where Moonbeam has like the hub of the contract, this, the brain of the operation. And the brain can say, OK, Alberto put collateral on Avalanche, and he wants to borrow ETH on, on, on Ethereum. Please let him borrow ETH. So then I can go to Ethereum and I can get my ETH uh, borrowed on Ethereum, right? So it, this, this all happens in a very seamless manner, right? So right now, uh, we have Wormhole Layer 0, Axlar, and Hyperlane as, as GMP protocols. I did include this because uh, it's a little joke. When CCIP, you know, we, we hopefully we get CCIP soon because we truly believe in a cross-chain and multi-chain future. And that's also part of the Chainlink vision. I don't know if you've ever read the blog post that they've been putting since they announced CCIP, where they think uh, the same way as us of connected contracts and cross-chain applications in a seamless manner that it's, they're highly secure, which is the main point that you know it needs to be addressed, that Chainlink is helping address, and 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 abstract all the complexities for end users, which is a crucial point uh, of this cross-chain world. So if you want to learn more, uh, please visit Moomim Network. You also have our Discord, our Telegram, our Twitter. This is my Telegram handle. Uh, if you have any questions about today's talk, I'm I try to be super responsive. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. You can also scan the, scan the QR code if you want to check the slides and, and check the links that I put there. Uh, and also, it, it's in a bit.ly link, which is MB for Moonbeam, SmartCon23. So I, I'll be around if you have any questions. I'll be outside the room. And yeah, I would like to thank you for attending and enjoy Barcelona. Please.